Well, Betty, here we are in Shanghai, China. And this is the Jingjiang Hotel. I love that name, don't you, Marv? The oh, Jingjiang Hotel. <laughs> right. Now, this is a famous hotel that Nixon stayed at when he made, of course, his historic visit to China and sort of opened it up to the west. And in the background, you can see the tower there. That is going to be the new Jingjiang Hotel. Yes, and I like the old Jingjiang. I, I thought did it too. was excellent. I thought it was it was wonderful. We wanted to show you some street scenes as we go along through downtown Shanghai because, of course, this is where the people are. The weather was pretty good too, wasn't it? Betty? Oh yeah. Yes, because look at the shirt sleeves. It's in that September. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Well, we're going to listen to our guide Ellen right now, as she has something to tell us. The, yes, the, you had so, you had a song sleep last night, but I didn't. Oh. I had my terrible experience. Oh. 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 Yesterday I went to the theater with my boyfriend. Ah. I had a very good seat, but I didn't uh, enjoy. The play was interesting, but I didn't enjoy it. A young man and a young woman were sitting behind me. They were talking loudly. I turned around and looked at them angrily. They did not pay any attention to me. In the end, I could not hear a word. So I turned around again and said, I cannot hear a word. Just do you know what the young man said to me? He said very rudely to me, it's none of your business. That's a private conversation. <laughs> Well, she shouldn't have been listening in on the conversation, huh? <laughs> you think that really happened? Oh, of course I think it happened. You know, she's kind of hard to hear. I mean, to well, listen to, to. You right. have to understand it. You have to be careful. I think that's why the guides repeat so many times. Uh, we're going by, in fact, we're going to go to the Shanghai Exhibition Hall. And, Betty, I was very impressed with this. I thought this was very interesting because there's also a friendship shop. That, oh, that well, was that's a, a hard friendship one. shop, right? <laughs> yes. That we're going to go into, too. But the outside of this building, in fact, one night uh, I met some college students in Shanghai, uh, and we all went to dinner up. There's a restaurant up there on top, and it was very, very interesting uh, because the service was a little bit different than, than what we'd had before. But I thought this was a beautiful building, and uh, it's too bad that the fountains weren't going because these looked like they were glass mm -hmm. Uh, fixtures there. I don't know whatever you would call them, but they were they were quite beautiful. But inside is where we saw wonderful treasures. This is marvelous. As you walk in the front door, this is a red carpet treatment. Mm -hmm. Actually, a beauty. It doesn't show as much in the picture here, but the rug was just beautiful. Right, and the artwork inside, everything from carvings to well, you name it. I think it was. Now you could actually buy things here. I I thought at first it was just going to be a display, but it wasn't. No, this is run by the Chinese themselves. It's like a friendship store what we had in Russia, mm -hmm. where it is uh, you you are guaranteed your prices, you are guaranteed your product. And they were quality products yes. there too. Well, you take here now this in this little area they're just selling fans, and that's that's all that they have there. But I was impressed with a lot of the porcelain that uh, I saw here, and uh, some of it, Betty, it looked to me like I don't know if you you got there because by the time we got in there, everybody just sort of went their own way because there was so much to see, and a lot there of people want to buy things. But here, these shots here that we have, this porcelain bowl, th that it looked like it was as thin as an eggshell and how they could do such delicate work like they're doing right here. You're on. so tempted to bring these back but they, they, uh, the fact that they are so delicate makes you think how will I ever carry them and get them home safely. I did get some porcelain home as a matter of fact and then broke it after I got it here. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh but that does happen but I did get it home safely and ivory of course that you can see there which is probably illegal in many countries. Hey, right now let's uh, join Ellen back on the bus. Step two of the Imperial Garden. And the building looks elegant and it covers a large area. And the and the Union Garden is a representative of the private gardens. And we have a lot of private gardens south of the Yangtze River. That doesn't mean they are nine times in the chest. Because nine was the largest old number and also in ancient time it was the lucky number. Use nine, you can avoid an evil spirit. And it is said, if you pass the nine layers, you can be in the paradise. So we're going to pass the la nine layers into the paradise. And the building over there, that's the tea house. It was built in, yeah, oh, in, in the 1870s. And it converted into the tea house in the 1900s. So it is called Enjoy Yourself Tea House. In the morning, you can find a lot of people relaxing and chatting each other over a couple of teas. 
above had the three wooden towers. The first one is called Mountain in the Forest in the City. Since Shanghai is lying on a low plain, there's no mountain or forest in the city. So the owner built this beautiful garden with plenty of trees and flowers and rockery to imitate the mountain and forest in the city. Hence the name. Second one that has something to do with the religions. That means he, the family member worshipped the ancestor to bless them to have a bump harvest. The last one is name of the hall, Three Corner Hall. Here is one of the features of the garden. Sculpture the brick sculpture the window. Brick sculpture the window. That's all made of the sculpture. And then each will presenting you different scenery outside. At the same time, the different scenery of the windows. And you can find a lot of pine trees and the cranes in the middle of the windows. Because many things in the garden are symbolic. The queen and the palm trees are the symbol of long life. Betty, our guide Ellen told us that uh, of course they didn't have cement in the days when this was built and so they used a mixture of lime, alum, and uh, a rice paste and that held all those rocks together. And can you imagine that they're still there after yeah. all these years? This was an observation point because at one point in time, uh, this was one of the highest areas around Shanghai. Uh, but it, it is interesting. I thought these gardens were absolutely amazing. And these doorways, some were in the shape of leaves, and these particular ones right here happen to be in the shape of a, of a jar or a vase. Yes. Uh -huh. and, uh, but this garden uh, uh, just went on and on and on. It was interesting to see that there were little ponds and of course there were fish and the, the tea house that we saw in the uh, in the first part of this. It was just absolutely magnificent. But these uh, the rock formations I thought were great and they must have had a sense of humor the way that they did this other this other building in in here because you could get lost. It was almost like a maze. But uh, the various halls that you would see there, and uh, but of course this was just one family. This was for one family that, that built this and uh, that enjoyed it. Of course now everyone can enjoy it. We're going to learn something about a gingo tree. So if we listen very carefully, we'll find out about that right now. Okay, now we come to the courtyard. Here you can find two ancient trees. This is a gingo tree with a history of more than 400 years. A male tree did not bear fruit. And another one is called a magnolia tree. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it has history of more than 200 years. Originally, there were two ginkgo trees, and the one died late on, and the magnolia tree is planted. Ginkgo. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And the hole behind us is called Qingba 10,000 flowers. Because uh, at that time, in the winter time, the family members and their friends can enjoy the pot the landscape inside of the hall. And they, the, sometimes also they can enjoy different scenery among the rocks just in front of the hall. They plant the willow for spring, bamboo for summer, maple for autumn, and the pine for winter among the rocks. Betty, don't you suppose that this would also be beautiful in the winter time? Oh, yes. However, I'm very happy that we were there in September, not needing jackets and sweaters and things. But this part is sort of like you think that China's going to be, mm -hmm. with all of the beautiful carvings and the buildings. And Oh, look at the roof. Isn't that just fabulous? I think the architecture really is fabulous here. You, you know, and if we didn't have a guide, I think you could actually get lost in there. Speaking of our guide, Helen has something else that she'd like to tell us about. The last feature of the garden, dragon wall, dragon wall. There are totally six dragon wall in this garden, each with different posture and a separate garden to different scenery. But ancient emperor always took the dragon as a symbol of power. Nobody else could put the dragon in the garden or in some places else. You know, Betty, if you look closely, you can see that the dragon has the antlers of a deer and the claws of a chicken and the body of a snake. Now, isn't well, that you, interesting? You've got better eyesight than I have, but now that you pointed out, yes, I can see uh -huh. that. Now, I don't know. This may be different than what the 
emperor used as a symbol of a dragon. I, I'm not sure of that, but I just sort of think so, because what the emperor had, no one else was allowed to have. But they, weren't these walls magnificent? Yes. And Marv, what do you think that was carved out of? Is that, uh, is that a wood, or is it some kind of a I'm uh, not sure. cement? I'm not sure. I don't know. It looked, I, I really don't know. But what amazed me, again, as we talked about just a moment ago, was all of this rock work and then held together with that glutinous yes. rice was, mixture, you know. And was like the you rock say, there, like, or do you think, or was it brought in? I don't really know. I, I suspect, because it was a garden built for this family, that it was probably brought in, because this was not the only place in China that we saw this particular type of rock. So I believe that it was brought in from another province where it's probably very, very prevalent. Oh, think of the man labor then to oh, that. Oh, hmm? really, yeah. And here's some of our adventures. We did walk a lot. But this garden was very very large and of course it was a nice warm day so here's some of our adventures that were just taking a little bit of a breather I think which we needed uh, the bench was most welcome yes indeed <laughs> and we must say too that the day that we were there there were several other people that were there a lot of Chinese a lot of other tourists uh, from other parts of the world as well now here's a little area that you could actually walk through that was made out of this this rock garden and in one of the one of the little courtyards there uh, Ellen explained to us that you should be able to see monkeys and fish and other animals. Uh, we just saw a monkey. Yeah. Did you see it? At least <laughs> that's what your like imagination can tell you sure. that. Well, sure. I think that's, that's what it is. And uh, so that made it very interesting. But we spent a good part of the afternoon there. Now, we're going to leave the garden. And, Betty, I'm just going to let the camera roll and sort of right at my side. So it's going to be a little more jumpy than it is because I wanted to get some shots of some of the people. You, we saw people just eating, squatting and eating right there on the sidewalk and, uh, and on the streets. And so we wanted to get some pictures of that. But I didn't want to embarrass anyone. No. So I just wanted to sort of keep the camera uh, rolling that way so that uh, no one, well, right here you can see, you yeah. know, that and uh, so it's a little bit jerky there but there were a lot of people as we were as we were walking away and walking back to the bus and uh, I thought this was most interesting because it's so nice to be right there in with the populace as well and look at the look at the clothes the that all oh, the this is have. what this is what really amazes me the clothes hanging this is how they dry their clothes of yeah. course and this is not just in China this is in many European countries they dry their clothes by hanging them across well you can see that those those uh, racks right there are made permanently just to just to hang the clothes on and that was one of the things that did amaze me when mm -hmm. we first got into Shanghai I thought that was uh, rather unusual well, I guess it's unusual because we're not used to no, it. nothing very <laughs> nothing is personal there you <laughs> that's right well now we're gonna go for lunch and we're going across the famous Iron Bridge and right there in front of us is the embassy of the Soviet Union with of course their antennas all over the place in 1937 the Japanese invaded Shanghai and they took as their headquarters the Shanghai Mansions Hotel and uh, this is a, a rather large hotel I was very impressed with it we had lunch here and uh, it's right on the edge of the of the waterfront right there it, it has a very nice location I thought and we had a very delicious lunch there the uh, if you remember Betty did, I don't know if you saw the picture of the Empire of the Rising Sun and when the people were trying to flee the Japanese the the street scene was was right here on okay. this particular street where our well, adventures well, are our little our people are going across <laughs> right now that's mm -hmm. right let's go see what Jim Scott has to say about how he enjoyed his lunch Jim, here we are in Shanghai, and you just had a Shanghai meal. What do you think of it? You know, we've been eating quite a bit, and I think these, this stuff is getting to be, we're getting used to it. <laughs> do you think that the food from northern China and the food from southern China is a little bit different? A little bit, a little bit. It is, it, it's, and it's uh, a little more tasty sometimes, I think. See? And, they're getting to be more getting to, to the point where the uh, the food is getting to be Western like mostly. See? More that more of what we're sort of used to, right? That's right. That's right. See. <laughs> well, what do you think of Shanghai so far? Well, what I've seen so far is really intriguing. I I'd like to see more, and I hope that we can see quite a bit. And I was interested in that, uh, in the, that rock formation we had we saw today. It was really something. And we, we, so far, everything looks pretty nice. I think when, in the old days, this must have been a pretty rough city. Well, what does everybody think of your Shanghai food? Uh, what do we think of the Shanghai food? We think this, this particular restaurant was excellent. We've enjoyed a lot of it. Oh. <laughs>
Did, Mamie, did you notice the difference between uh, the food in the north of China and the food of the south of China? Yes. yes. Which is your preference? Being that we're in the south of China right now. Yes, south. That would be your preference, the south yes, of China? Yes, yes it would be. Yes. Well, I did think that there was a difference between the food from the north and the south. Did you, Betty? Well, I'm not that good a judge, you know, of food. I can take it or leave it, whether it's north or south. But no, I, I, because it, when we got into south of China, it seemed like uh, it was more of the Chinese food that, that we're familiar with here in the United States. This area, I believe, is called the Wai Tan area. The hotel that you see up there uh, in front of us was built just before 1920. And the area... Uh, that we're looking at, it was, we're sort of a side view from it, is called the Bund or the waterfront area. And uh, now we've just sort of transferred over there in our bus and we're getting ready to walk along the, the waterfront or the Bund. I thought this guy was kind of interesting. He must be the parking attendant. You notice the little was, red thing on yeah. his, on his uh, arm there and he's also giving directions to some of these people too. So many cigarette smokers in China. Yeah, that surprised oh, me. Wow, that's yes. that surprised me. Yeah. And uh, these beautiful buildings here on the Bund or the waterfront uh, were were quite impressive to me. I'd seen lots of pictures of them before. This is the busiest harbor, Betty, I think I've ever seen. Well, I think it has that reputation, doesn't it? Yeah. As being one of the busiest in the world. I noticed the water was rather murky looking. It wasn't well, a nice. Well, I think you've got several rivers running yeah. into this particular river that are probably, uh, you know, contributing to that as well. But uh, on our next show, we're going to take, oh, buy some postcards. We're going to take an actual ride down the river and go to the mouth of the Yangtze River, which is going to be rather exciting. How about but, this? Huh? Yeah, th <laughs> this is a pedestrian walkway, and, it, and it's, it's up over the street, and it hits all four corners of the street. I thought that was interesting. Let's listen to Ellen as she explains something to us. Many people practice English oh, on, Sunday, you, uh, yes, on Sunday, and uh, because now English speaking become the national sport, and also used to be part of the race course before 1949. And that's Park Hotel. We're going to have a lunch tomorrow. Park Hotel used to be the tallest building in Shanghai, but now it was replaced by the Union Building where my office is on 27th floor. And the Grand Theater, the largest movie theater with a total seating capacity of 2,000. Betty, if I heard Ellen correctly, she says that English is practiced every Sunday in the park, which is actually off to our left-hand side. Sure. Don't you remember them coming up and asking us? They want to exchange words and to make sure that they have them right. That's and true. And, Marv, let me say something to you right now. Yeah. As we go along and, and view the stores, as we saw them, mm -hmm. you could be anywhere, couldn't you? If oh, sure. If it weren't for the Chinese letters. Yeah. Well, look, there's uh, now we telephone have, yeah. and telegram. But, right? but the, the, the buildings, the, mm -hmm. the trees, the whole, the whole terrain would make you think you're anywhere. Right. You know, I, I was wondering why there was so much uh, English there, and then I had to remember that, well, the English were in uh, this area for a long time, as well as other non-Chinese people. This was interesting. I thought the Shanghai Children's Food Store yes. took up about a half a block. And I ha have no idea what it means, whether that's just for the children or what? Yeah, maybe they specialize in children's food yeah. there. I don't know. That's another interesting thing, of course. Uh, you, can, you are allowed one child in, in the country, and I think that is probably why uh, so much emphasis is placed on the child wherever we went and where uh, the grandmother was showing off if she was babysitting with the child the, the, the they were so proud oh, of, yes. the, of the child you so know beautifully was, dressed a, absolutely oh, yes speaking of being beautifully dressed Betty let's go to a fashion show and take a look
Well, from fashions to a children's school, actually called a children's palace. Betty, now you being a former school teacher, you can explain to me a little bit about what was going on here. Well, it's so different than what we have in the United States. Although the, the children in this particular school are all exceptional learners. Mm -hmm. They don't accept everybody in this school. And it was wonderful to see the type of education they're getting. Music, drama, just you name it. They have that available to them. And I wish we could borrow some of that in our schools. Hmm. Now, of course, the shots that I have here uh, are mainly of the children, you know, in a recreational setting. And you can see that this was an old mansion at one point. Look at the fireplace oh, back there. Oh, it was there. a beautiful place. Oh, absolutely gorgeous. And so were the grounds. Uh, did you understand how the children were, were picked to go to this particular children's palace? Oh, they really didn't go into it, except these had to be children that had an exceptional ability to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, the other children went off to another school because everybody goes to school. Um, these and of course remember they have only one child per family that's right yeah. and if you take a look at the way the children are dressed and how they're really nurtured mm -hmm. you kind of rather understand it with just one child to a family yeah I noticed that the kids didn't seem to be fighting and pushing and pulling like uh, oh, no. we we notice so much with our our children Aren't they darling? Yeah, they really are. Yeah. Very well mannered and very well behaved. That, that's that's true. I understand that there that there are children's palaces like the, that's the name of the of the place uh, in in other areas in China. I mean, this was not just no, one of, that's the, of right. the areas. That's so. right. And they do keep them occupied. If they're not doing their studies, mm -hmm. then they have a structured play for them, which is keeps them out of trouble. Now, when you went upstairs to some of the rooms, what, what was going on? Were they doing music lessons or what? Yes, we had some that were learning the violin, some were learning the piano. We had a drama class that was going on. Mm. They're all cultural things, uh, uh, exceptional things that we don't seem to have to offer right now, especially at this age. Mm -hmm. What an advantage they have. Oh, that is nice. And as yeah. I say, too, the grounds I thought were beautiful. Of course, as, as we stated, that uh, this probably was the home of uh, some wealthy industrialist or whatever at one point, and the state probably took it over and uh, then, then turned it into uh, to the children's palace, as, as you see. I was surprised because this, this home or this estate is right in the center of town. Yes. I mean, everything is built up around it, isn't it? One thing about the school, too, Marv, that uh, I, I found unusual was how, the amount of help that they had. All state employees, they probably have one per five children, something on that ratio. You mean for per teacher? Yes, one teacher or helper uh -huh. per five children. I see. I see. Well, it was interesting. I, I, when she stated that we were going to go to Children's Palace, I thought we were going to probably a miniature Disneyland. Yeah. Well, you have to remember also that they knew we were coming that day, and it's like kids anywhere when oh, yeah. they know somebody's coming to see them. I think that this probably, I think that this probably is open all the time. I mean, to tourists because there were there were other groups besides ourselves that were that were there. But certain hours and only mm -hmm. certain days, I think, Marv. I don't know for sure. Look though. at that. Isn't that a yes. beautiful old mansion? Oh, oh yes. Oh, boy. That <laughs> Think of what it was like in its heyday without yes. the kids roaming around the parties <laughs> and balls. Hmm? I just keep thinking that this is uh, such a beautiful mansion and that uh, in its heyday it must have really really been something. I want to remind everybody too that we do have some exciting trips coming up and if you're interested just give Betty a call at 488-7443 or drop her a line at 1550 North Fresno Street, Fresno 93703. Now I, I had to get a shot of this of course uh, uh, children's television uh, was on a good portion of the day and they do just beautiful productions yeah. with the kids again I wonder if some of these were graduates of the Children's Palace probably probably hello everyone Betty and Marv here to remind you about uh, the trips that we have coming up for this year but you know what we don't want to talk about that really 
We don't. Now, we want to talk about the stuff that we're planning for next year, for the year 2001. We oh, Marv, we're just getting almost to a point where I've got things all in order now. We're going to plan for next year, right? Right, yeah. Okay, Gotta if you say so, ahead, you, know you be the boss. Anyway, we want to go back to China. Yes. And if you would like to go with us, why don't you give Betty a phone call and say, hey, I'm a candidate for China. We'll also, of course, go back to the Holy Land. We're thinking about England, Ireland, and Scotland. Turkey and South America. So if any of those interest you, give Betty a call and say, hey Betty, I'm interested in going on one of those trips. We don't have the brochures yet. These are all in the making right now. We're, right. These are, we're fomenting for next year. And so, if you, in fact, you might have an idea of places that you would like to go that would give us an idea for the year 2001. I, I, I'm probably talking too much like I always do, but you know why we're going to China? is because they are, we go up to Guilin and we take the cruise and we're going to go to mm -hmm. the Three Gorges and they're going to dam that up and this will be the last time anybody will be able to see it right. within the next three years. So all of this magnificent part of China will be lost to everyone. So we want to get in there before this happens. We want to see it before it's yes. all covered with water. And we want you to see it too. Right. Give Betty a call at 488-7443. Thank you.